All right, uh, Coach, uh, just kind of here to talk about the uh, our last game on Friday against Buffalo and then uh, just talk about this week's uh, upcoming game. Yeah, obviously a tough game at Buffalo Friday night. Uh, really, really good team. Uh, was very prepared, uh, high energy team. Uh, they played outstanding. Uh, we didn't play, I thought, schematically from a scouting standpoint. We were ready, uh, but we weren't ready for the speed or the physicality or the intensity that the game was played at. Um, and you can't do that against a very good Buffalo team. And, uh, you know, we got beat. We got beat pretty bad. And uh, obviously it's something that uh, we've got to learn and grow from. Uh, this week, I don't know what to say. You know, we play Kent tomorrow. Um, and we haven't heard anything from the league about any further games this week. Um, I don't know. I would, we've asked. Uh, we're waiting for word. I would anticipate we'd play somebody. I just don't know how it's all going to shake out with who's available to play and can we play them. In that Buffalo game, when you, when you watch that tape, can you show your guys or do you show your guys how they play and what it could mean for your program if you kind of played like that or you did some similar things? Yeah, for, for sure. So we had position film, um, you know, work. Uh, yesterday uh, and I think there's a lot you can take from that um, you know we had obviously a, a long discussion about it as a team um, but certainly the intensity that it takes uh, to play and win at a high level um, in this league was something that we didn't bring um, you know very few times in my opinion as our guy our guys not played um, hard um, you know and put out the effort um, I think our guys um, quite honestly you know, I think they were surprised by the speed and the intensity um, that Buffalo played at. And it's certainly something that we can watch, uh, we can learn, and it's something we want to strive to build our program towards. Coach, in that Buffalo game, uh, you know, the Bulls were able to, to force 12 steals on you. Well, you only got seven, which highlighted uh, what's been sort of a problem all year long, and that opponents uh, have 121 steals while. while your squad's only been able to pick up 71. Um, how important is it to not give your opponents those easy opportunities that often come from, from steals and fast breaks? Well, it's huge. It's huge. And it's been a problem for our team, you know, all year long. There's no secret about that. I mean, one of the things that's interesting and we talk to our guys about, you know, we have more assists than our opponents do on the year. Um, you know, we have 186 assists and they have 181. Um, the difference, though, is, is how much more we turn the basketball over. Uh, and that's been an Achilles heel uh, for us, you know, candidly all year long. Um, from an from a analytics standpoint, um, the worst thing you can do is have a live ball turnover for your defense. A live ball turnover, meaning obviously they run through a passing lane, they steal the ball. Um, those are the worst things that you can do, you know, from a, analytically, defensively. Um, and Buffalo forced 12 of those, and those a lot of times are turning into easy layups or transition baskets that you just can't defend. You're normally outnumbered in that situation. We've worked on it. One thing that helped us, you know, going into the Buffalo game, the reason we had been playing better is we had gone three straight games where we had more assists and turnovers, um, and that had made a big difference in our offense, and we weren't able to continue to do that uh, against Buffalo. Did they defend Greg Lee any differently, or was it just – one of those nights or were they really focused on him? Well, I think it's something that Greg obviously can learn from as well, not just our entire team. You're the Mac player of the week coming into the game. And you're going to get a lot more attention. Uh, they were really surrounding him. Uh, they were physical with him. Um, you know, Greg competed, um, didn't get some of the looks that he has been getting. Um, they certainly extended out some of his catches and really tried to be more physical with him. Uh, which obviously was an effective plan, but it's something that we all can learn from. And Greg obviously can learn from getting better, you know, about how teams are going to play him as well. It was a, a tougher game, obviously, against Buffalo for Lee, but uh, before that it was five straight games of more than 15 points. Um, what's he been able to do differently or what's changed for him to, to bring on this sort of increased scoring role and especially his efficiency on the offensive end? Well, first, I think credit to his hard work. Greg works extremely hard in practice, um, during practice, before practice, after practice, he's putting in the work. I think offensively, we found some better ways to get him the ball where he could be more successful. Um, I think he's playing a lot more 
um, in an area of the floor where he can use his speed and attack the basket. Uh, Greg is a great athlete and he's got really good foot speed. He's been able to use that to get by people uh, for sure. I think we've tried to help him out with some things that we've positions we've put him in, but ultimately, you know, he's the one making the plays. He's the one putting the work in um, and he's been, he's been playing extremely well uh, here, you know, as we've, as we've been, as we've gone along here in conference play. Coach, how about Titus Wright? He got out to a great start. He was a focal point. You were making an effort to get the ball to him. And then he became the focal point of the scouting report for the opponents. And it, it appears that uh, it's been a little frustrating for him. And then he was out for a couple of weeks, and that set him back even more. But where do you think Titus is at? And and uh, how can he help you moving forward here as you get closer to the end of the season? Yeah, for sure. You know, he obviously played extremely well earlier in the year. Um, teams really started changing how they played him. He was getting double teamed an awful lot, trying to get the ball out of his hands. Um, and uh, that took away some of his productivity. Then when he was out for a couple of weeks, it takes you a while to get back. I think this is maybe his third or fourth game back. Um, I think he's playing better. I think teams are continuing to really try to work to deny and extend his catches. I think they're trying to be very physical with him. One of the things that's hurts Titus's scoring productivity is his struggles from the foul line. Um, he's getting some baskets. He's, he's scoring around the rim and when he's not, he's fouling, he's getting fouled and then he can't convert at the free throw line. Um, and we've got to continue to help him and work with him and get some extra free throws. Those free throws are huge. Um, we've got to, be, you know, you know, when you're going to, He's a hard guy to officiate because he's big and he's strong and he's physical and he's always running into somebody or somebody's running into him. Um, and when that happens, he's got to go to the foul line and capitalize on those opportunities. Another player who's been who's been out recently, uh, Rafael Cruz, he returned to the lineup uh, for the last two games, but but was at significantly lower minutes than he was playing earlier in the year. Is he still working his way back from an injury or illness and and what are you expecting out of him over the next week or so? Yeah, you know, Ralph was, was uh, away from the team for over three weeks. Um, his conditioning is, is nowhere near where it needs to be. Um, and that's you know, just, just from everything he's been through. You know, we've tried to play Ralph, um, you know, mm -hmm. in an unselfish way. Ralph was asked to come out of the game. He's just tired. Um, you know, he can't go for very long stretches at times. I and mean, we were, were trying to work him in practice and trying to get him some extra work and stuff. But you know, close to a month of, of being gone is an awful lot. Uh, and, his, and his conditioning has really, has really taken a hit. Um, obviously, we need him. You know, we need all of our guys. Uh, we need, all, we need every, every option that we have. Uh, we need him to play. We need him to play well. But to do that, he's going to have to get back in physical condition to be able to do that. Coach, you played Kent State this week, and it's a team you played earlier at their place played a really good first half and then they just regrouped and had a huge second half on you and they played without Pip and their best player. But what do you see in Kent State and what do you need to do to be successful in this one? Really, really odd game at their place. I think it was a two point game with 12 minutes to go. Um, and then we went on a 10 minute stretch that uh, I don't think any of us want to remember. You know, the, the issue with Kent, when you play Kent State, is they're, they're, they're very, very physical, uh, and their physicality can wear on you, uh, and, that's, and that's what happened. They're a very good offensive rebounding team. They've got great size. Um, they have good players. Uh, when they miss the shot, they go in offensive rebounding extremely well. They get 13 offensive rebounds a game. Um, all their guys go to the glass uh, and, and really challenge you from a physical standpoint. And we didn't answer the bell. We didn't, we didn't do that for 40 minutes. You, if you do that for 28 minutes, that's what, this is what's going to happen to you over the last 12. I think we learned from that. Hopefully that the, uh, some of the, some things we learned and saw from the Buffalo game will carry over, but we need a great physical battle uh, from our guys tomorrow night. Coach, uh, one more player focus question for me. Uh, Josiah Freeman um, has, has been, Performing pretty well this year. He's got obviously great athleticism. You know, he's shooting threes at uh, about 38% right now on the year. What's something you're looking for him to, to improve upon either the rest of this year or getting into next year uh, to really sort of have him fill out more as a player? 
Yeah, JoJo's had a really, really good year. Uh, I think uh, in a lot of ways he's really grown and matured, and we're certainly pleased with his progress. Um, he's a tremendous shooter of the basketball. Uh, he really can. He really makes open shots. He can shoot it with range. He's, he's, he's effortless in, in, in his release. And there's a lot of upside to that. The big challenge with all of our guys is to continue to find ways that you can continue to get better. You know, 17 of JoJo's 24 baskets on the years have been threes. Uh, teams are playing him as a shooter. Uh, the scouting report as we've gone more and more games is to climb into him, uh, take away his space, make him put the ball on the floor, make him make plays off the bounce. Um, and that's a, that's a compliment to how well he shoots the basketball, but it's also an area where he's going to have to grow and, and move forward because, you know, the word is out. Uh, the scouting report is out on him now, and he's got to, to, he's got to be able to expand his game by putting the ball on the floor and be able to make plays off the bounce. Clayton, you signed two players to letters of intent in November, and one of them from Indiana has been playing all season. The other from Michigan is just getting started. How about an update on those two guys? Sure. So Gus Etchison uh, over the weekend became his school's all-time leading scorer. Uh, I think he's about 1,800, 1,900 points now. Um, he's getting th He scores 30-something a night. Uh, he takes a lot of shots to get those, uh, but he's an electric scorer. Uh, he can uh, he can really he makes shots. He can make plays off the bounce. Um, we're certainly excited about him. Uh, he's having a really good year. Um, Owen Lobsinger just started. They played three games. Uh, I think he had 30 the first night. I think he had 28 the second night. I don't know how many finished what they played. Grand Blank, who's obviously loaded, uh, was you know one of the best players or some of the best players in the state. They've got uh, had a tough loss, um, but but really competed and played well. I don't know how many points he finished with, but off to a good start. Uh, both the guys are skilled. Both the guys can shoot the basketball uh, with range, uh, which is something that we need. Um, but certainly eager, uh, excited to get those guys here to Kalamazoo and, and, and get to work with those two young men. Yeah, uh, Kent State uh, comes in to the year uh, with, with 261 assists. They do that really well, uh, sharing the basketball you mentioned earlier. Um, how, how your team has been able to get more assists than your opponents. How do you limit um, Kent State's ball movement uh, and what's the focus on defense in regards to that? Well, for sure, Kent, you know, they've got a, they've got a good team. Uh, they got to got some guys that have played together for a while. I think anytime you want to limit assists um, by other teams, you've really got to work to keep the ball in front of you. I think when, uh, when you get put in rotation, um, and they, they start moving the basketball and swinging the basketball around. That's when a lot, a lot of times assists happen. I think when you have the ball in front and you force a tough jumper uh, or, for, or a tough post shot, uh, I think those are the shots that you're trying to force. I think anytime you have to rely on help um, and the ball starts getting moved around, you know, that's something we do every day in practice. We work on trying to create help, pass the ball, one more pass for an even a better shot. You know, teams work on that day in and day out. Uh, but it all, it all starts from not being broken down off the bounce. Uh, and that's something that uh, we're going to have to do a really, really good job of. The other thing with Kent, when they do that, when you start scrambling and you start rotating, uh, people are free to rebound uh, and they're excellent at that. And there's just an that's another reason why we really have to work to keep the ball in front of us. Clayton, do you expect all of these games to be made up or they're going to try to do as many as they can? That would be quite difficult here to make up all of these games. Have you heard anything on what they're trying to do? Well, according to my math, there's three weeks left in the season today. Uh, and so we need to make up nine games. So we have nine games left to play. Um, and so we've got some games scheduled, but we don't have nine on the schedule just yet. And that's my assumption. That's playing every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Uh, I think you'd have to play three games a week. Um, and so right now, like I said, we play on Tuesday. We don't have a game yet for Thursday or Saturday. Um, now that may change my anticipation that it will change next, the following week. Uh, I, my sense is I think we may get three games in that week. Um, just from some, some early, you know, looking at people's schedules and Mary kind of trying to, for us trying to guess ahead, I think we can do that. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't see a scenario where we get to 20 games. Uh, we would like to, I think everybody would like to, uh, I don't, I just don't think that's realistic here going down the stretch.